two, three, four. But it's a 99, baby, it's my favorite time of the day. But it's a 99, baby, can't wait to hear what they have to say. Uh, all right, uh, number nine, we told you yesterday about a real historical figure called Roland the Farter, who was a court oh, jester yeah. for King Henry II of England. <laughs> And apparently, history has a lot of references to people with the title flatulist. Uh, most commonly, medieval flatulist. It's been a real entertainment job for a large portion of history. It seems that people have always thought that a well-timed certain something is very funny. See, Larry. The Wikipedia page says a flatulist is an entertainer often yep. associated with a specific type of humor mm -hmm. whose routine consists solely or primarily of passing gas in a creative, musical, or amusing manner. All right, that's fair. Uh, the philosopher and theologian St. Augustine even mentions them. Wow. And so do intellectuals from the French Renaissance. Uh, going back to the 10 hundreds, there are records of them delighting people from Ireland wow. to Japan. So there's some interesting history there. Larry, I know that. I'm sure that tickles yeah, your fancy. Yeah, that was interesting. Get the yeah, history an part old, going. old, old joke. Yeah. Intellectuals, Larry. Yeah. Yeah. It's St. Augustine, even. Woo! <laughs> All right, number eight. Stress can be contagious. Researchers say just seeing another person in a stressful situation can make our own bodies react. We release cortisol, the hormone involved in stress response. It's a phenomenon known as empathetic stress. It, be, it happens more often when we see a loved one feeling anxious. Yep. We end up feeling what they're feeling because it's something called mirror neurons. Those are brain cells that respond the same way whether we witness something or, or do it ourselves. You can read more about it in the journal Current Biology. Ooh. Number seven, every now and then, it's fun to remember an old meme like this kid dancing to impress the girl. Uh, there's uh, a backstory here. The girl is his sister, and she bet him he couldn't make her laugh. <laughs> Some memes have been around long enough to have entered the public domain. Look at the that's effort good, here. I like that. Did it ever? Did he break her? I don't know. I'd like to know that. He looks like he's about 35 years old. Yeah. <laughs> Look at him go. Well, that's that's not make her right laugh. There. Come on. <laughs> I get Molly's dad like, hey, can you get over here and help me out? Man, please. Ah, dedication there. <laughs> She's like, nope, not working. <laughs> He's not quite. Good for him. Oh, that's okay, good. That's great. All right, number six. If you're a big fan of IPA beers, you might want to thank President Jimmy Carter. Beer geeks know all about it. In 1978, Carter signed a bill that had an amendment pushed by Alan Cranston, a senator from California. Basically, it got rid of all the tax on any beer that was brewed at home uh, for personal or family use. It lifted regulations that were put in during prohibition. It led to lots of home brewing, which spurred on the craft brewing craze, which led to lots of small brew pubs opening up. So thanks to Jimmy wow. Carter and Chris right. for that one. Uh, number five, someone might have a crush on you and you don't even know it. Oh. Hello. Relationship scientists say there are ways to tell. Do they match their texting style to yours? <laughs> Maybe they use the same phrases or lingo that wow. you do. Do they make plans with you for future events? For example, Ooh. do they agree to attend a friend's birthday party with you Excuse me. two Sorry. months from now? Wow. That means they plan to be around and in your life for a while. And finally, do they notice specific things about you? Oh. Like when you add pictures on Instagram or change a profile picture. They're definitely paying attention. Oh, all right. Mm. All right, number four, super pigs are coming. Ooh. They're part domestic pig, part wild boar, and they're being bred by farmers in Canada. Ooh. They're larger than normal pigs, and due to their genetic makeup, they can survive in frozen landscapes. That means they can live in locations with colder climates and even reproduce at temperatures that might ordinarily kill livestock. Wow. Sounds awesome, right? Well, not so fast. Super pigs 
don't play well with others. They're known for attacking other traditional farm animals like turkeys. So that could be a big problem. Mm. Yeah. Farmers are still trying to figure out how to domesticate the pigs, make them a bit friendlier. Mm -hmm. That's a nice children's book right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Except for the turkeys. Yeah. All right, number three, I just want to take a moment to remind everyone that there's a whole world of socks out there for all of us to enjoy. This is America, so you can wear any socks that you choose, and you should know that you have lots of options. They have socks for pretty girls to lounge in, socks for people who love their cats, socks on Etsy that are just full of whimsy. I just don't even know what to do. And uh, when you look at these socks with the toes built in, Ugh. This is the wonderful world. Oh, those are Look fun, ah, yeah. Is that God. not sassy? Uh. <laughs> it's good to know that uh, our children will probably live to see even more wacky innovations with socks, but yeah. what a world we live in yeah. now. Who'd have thought about this 100 years ago, mm -hmm. right? Look how far we've come. So even that bothers you when they're covered yes. up. Yes. That bothers mm. you, Yes, huh? I don't like those. <laughs> no. All right. Mm, there's something else to me. Number two, all this talk about chatbots, but they're not a new thing. In the 1960s, a scientist at MIT created Eliza. She responded to words like girlfriend, mother, and father. If Eliza was at a loss, she had generic responses like, please go on, and that's very interesting. Almost like a friend who's not really interested in what you're saying. The MIT students loved her. They'd tell her all sorts of confessions and secrets. The MIT scientists had to remind them there was no one on the other end. It was a computer program. Over time, the interest waned. In 1977, Eliza's creator gave an interview to the New York Times and said, there are aspects to human life that a computer cannot understand, cannot. Part two on Eliza Ooh. tomorrow. Oh, wow. Ooh. Uh, all right, number one, let's check out uh, Jerry Seinfeld's first appearance on TV doing stand-up. It was on Celebrity Cabaret, a syndicated TV show recorded in New York in 1977. Uh, we'll show that and then jump ahead to his first appearance on The Tonight Show five years later. Oh, all right. Direct from New York, welcome to Celebrity Cabaret. Today's guest celebrity, Dick Sean. And now, your master of ceremonies at the Celebrity Cabaret, Richard Hall. Oh, I have to I don't know what's going on. And uh, Manhattan is where I live. Manhattan, as you know, is the site of the tramway. The tramway is this new thing that they have on Roosevelt Island. It's a cable car that goes back and forth between Manhattan and Roosevelt Island. I think that this is a terrific thing. The city's on the verge of bankruptcy. They're putting up rides for us. And <laughs> next thing you know, we'll have a roller coaster through the ghetto, which be dynamite. I could see that, though. Roller coaster through the ghetto? Sure. That'll be the first roller coaster where they scream on the flat part of the ride. <laughs> I, uh, I want to tell you I have contact lenses in now. I got glasses when I was a little boy. I was 10 years old when I got my first pair of glasses. I didn't even understand it. I thought that I was getting glasses because I couldn't tell what my parents looked like. Because every time I'd ask my mother to buy me something, she'd say, what do I look like, a bank? <laughs> And you know, you know what I figured out when you're a little kid? Your parents are the bank, aren't they? Where am I gonna get money? If I'm 10 years old and I need to get money, can I walk into Chase Manhattan? The teller's just gonna say to me, what do I look like, your mother? <laughs> I grew up. <laughs> yeah. It's all uphill from there. <laughs> wow. He's gonna write for himself, but it's yeah. weird to see him working that out in the early mm. stages. At the night at wow. nine. The night at nine is a whole lot of fun.